In this video, we will study about the triangle inequality for addition of two vectors. So let's say we got a vector c, which is sum of vector a and vector b. Let's draw the diagram. So let's say this is our vector a. And this is our vector b. This is b vector. Then the vector c will be over here. So this is our vector c. Now the magnitude of c vector, that is c, will depend on magnitude of vector a, magnitude of vector b, and the angle between vectors a and b. So the angle between vectors a and b will be this thing, theta. Okay. Now, suppose we keep the values of a and b fixed and we only change the angle theta. Then how would the magnitude of vector c change? Okay, so I have created a graph over here. You can see the vector a, vector b and vector c. Now there is one more thing that you can notice which is that magnitude of vector b is less than magnitude of vector a. This is a graph I have drawn on Desmos. I have shared the link of the graph in the description. You can visit the link to see the graph yourself. Now let's change the angle between vectors A and B. So, now you can see, as the angle of B with respect to A is changing, the magnitude of C vector is also changing. At some point of time it becomes minimum, at some point of time it becomes maximum. Let's change the angle manually. So you can change this slider for t over here to play with the graph yourself. So see, when t equal to 0, that is the angle between a vector and b vector is 0, then magnitude of c vector, that is c is equal to a plus b. And this is the maximum value of c. So we learn that magnitude of c will be maximum when the a vector and b vector are in same direction. The angle between them is 0. Similarly, if I move the angle and I take it all the way up to pi. Now in this case, the a vector and b vector are in opposite direction. The angle between them is pi. So you can see that the c is now having minimum value. c is now equal to a minus b. So, this is the minimum value of C. Let's look at the animation again. So as the angle is decreasing, C is increasing. Again angle is increasing now, C is decreasing and here C is minimum. Now let's do one more thing. We pause the angle. Now let's change the magnitude of vector B. Let's make it more than magnitude of vector A. In this graph, I have kept the magnitude of A to be equal to 5 and I can change the magnitude of B. So let's make it equal to, let's say, 7. Okay. Now, let's play the animation again. So again, you can see as I change the angle, the magnitude of vector C is changing. Let's pause the animation. So when angle between A and B is 0, that is A and B are in same direction. Again we observe that magnitude of C vector is equal to sum of A and B. That is C is equal to A plus B. As I increase the angle, C is decreasing. It is decreasing, decreasing, decreasing until it becomes minimum. So when the angle is pi between A and B, C is minimum. And now C is equal to B minus A. Because B is greater than A, so C is equal to B minus A. This is the minimum magnitude of vector C. Let's play the animation again. Right now C is maximum. Now it is decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. And now it is minimum. Again it is increasing, increasing, increasing. And now it is maximum. So let's pause the animation. So this is how C can change by changing the angle between A and B. So now let's look at this triangle. This side is A, 
this side is B and this side over here is C. This is a triangle. Now you all must be familiar with the inequality that sum of two sides, sum of two sides of a triangle is greater than the third side. If we apply this relation over here, then this side C, C will be less than sum of this side and this side that is C is less than A plus B. This is one relation that we will be needing. Then we can use one more equation. Let's first take this side A. So A will be less than sum of this side C and this side B. So A is less than C plus B. If we rearrange this inequality, A minus B is less than C. So this is the second inequality that we will be using. Now, let's redraw the vector A. This is vector A. And this is vector B. This is vector B. Then C vector will be drawn like this. So this is the vector C. And is, as you can see now, C is equal to A plus B in magnitude. And the angle theta over here is equal to 0. Theta is the angle between A and B and it is 0. So A vector and B vector are in same direction. Now let's take the condition when theta is equal to pi. So let's redraw the diagram. So this is our vector A and this is the vector B. This is A vector, this is B vector. Then C vector will be drawn like this. This is C vector. Here we can observe that magnitude of B vector is less than magnitude of A vector. Then C is equal to A minus B. Here theta is equal to pi. Now let's take one more situation. Now let's draw the vector A again. And this is vector B. But this time magnitude of vector B is more than magnitude of vector A. This is A vector, this is B vector. Then this time B is greater than A. Also theta is again equal to pi. Then the vector C would be drawn like this. This is the vector C. The vector C starts from the tail of A vector and ending up to the head of B vector. A vector and B vector are connected head to tail. So basically we are adding them. So this is the vector C. And now you can see that C is equal to B minus A. So let's combine all that we learned. First we combine this inequality and this equation. So we get C is less than or equal to A plus B. Now if we combine this inequality along with this equation, then we get C is greater than or equal to A minus B. But if we want to root, use this equation, then we should put modulus over here. If we combine these two inequalities together, then we get C is less than equal to A plus B and greater than equal to modulus of A minus B. This is the triangle inequality that we have. Now let's look at method 2 for deriving the triangle inequality. We have C vector is equal to a vector plus B vector. Then magnitude of C vector will be under root of A square plus B square plus 2AB cos theta. Now we are keeping A and B fixed but only changing the angle theta. So we know that cos theta will be less than equal to plus 1 and greater than equal to minus 1. We get cos theta equal to plus 1 when 
theta is equal to 0 and we get cos theta equal to minus 1 when theta is equal to pi. So, C is maximum when cos theta is maximum. So, we could say that C will be less than equal to under root of a square plus b square plus 2ab. Now, the maximum value of cos theta over here will be 1. So, we are left with only 2ab. Then, C is less than equal to under root of. Now, this a square plus b square plus 2ab will be equal to a plus b whole square. So, we get C less than equal to a plus b. Now, similarly, C is minimum when cos theta is minimum. So, C will be greater than equal to under root of a square plus b square plus 2ab into minimum value of cos theta which is minus 1 or we could rewrite this as under root of a square plus b square minus 2ab less than equal to c. This will be now equal to a minus b whole square and this is less than equal to c. So, square root of a minus b whole square will be a minus b or b minus a less than equal to c or we could combine them together by simply writing modulus of a minus b is less than equal to c. So, we use this inequality and we use this inequality then we get c less than equal to a plus b greater than equal to modulus of a minus b. This is again our triangle inequality. Now what about the triangle inequality for subtraction of two vectors? So if we have c vector is equal to a vector minus b vector, then it is nothing but addition of a vector with negative of b vector. Now magnitude of c vector is c, magnitude of a vector is a, magnitude of negative of b vector is again b only. So c will still be less than equal to a plus b and greater than equal to modulus of a minus b. There is no change in the inequality.